South Carolina is about to lower the flag and never raise it again outside the South Carolina Capitol building. We are expecting the ceremony to be fairly brief. Reports from those covering the story there describe the plan as a short and simple affair. We will look and listen in as the ceremony starts, but some of the background on this. This week, first in the state Senate, then in the state House, lawmakers voted to remove that symbol of the Civil War era South, led by those who also feel it as a symbol of hate. Then, as she promised, the South Carolina governor quickly signed it into law. Those who pushed hardest for the change wanted it to happen no later than the end of the week, and that is the way it is playing out. As for the effects of the decision and the debate that fueled it, they ripple out far beyond South Carolina and the rest of the South. Here in Indianapolis, leaders at the NCAA say they'll change a 15-year-long sanction against South Carolina. When the flag stops flying, the NCAA will again start allowing South Carolina to start bidding to be a tournament site again. For years, South Carolina has not hosted, for example, March Madness, nor any major pre-scheduled college championships in any sport. Only exceptions have been tournaments in which teams host games based on their records. They schedule those on very short notice. And, for instance, the University of South Carolina has qualified to host some of those, but no big-scale national tournaments. The question of whether and where the Confederate flag should or should not fly will also be part of the conversation here later this month. NASCAR has its roots in the Deep South, and some of its fans proudly display the flag, but track owners have asked them not to bring those flags to races. Indianapolis Motor Speedway is one of those tracks, and it hosts the Rickyard 400 in a little more than two weeks. If the issue becomes a source for formal or informal protest from either side of the debate, we'll cover that as it happens. Another live look in on South Carolina as the events are scheduled to start, bringing together people from different sides of the political aisle, but in many cases the same view on where the state stands with its Confederate past and the future for the flag. It is not disappearing. It is, in fact, symbolically going into a museum. At least one example of the Confederate flag will be part of what they, they call a relics museum uh, that has on display many items from South Carolina's past, including its Confederate uh, history. Um, there are many people there who are eager to see this not just as a symbol of the, uh, the Civil War and, again, what they feel is hate going away, but also a 50-year-long protest, if you will, that uh, South Carolina has essentially had by flying the Confederate flag. It first went up outside the state capitol as a form of protest of uh, the civil rights movement what, that at the time was uh, very active and very unpopular among many in the, uh, in the Deep South. So again, uh, many different people joined there today. 11 o'clock was the start time. We'll watch in and listen in uh, as the event starts. And again, who will speak? We don't know. We'll, we'll learn along with you. It would not at all be surprising to hear some of those who uh, argued most passionately for this change on the floor of the House or the State Senate to have an opportunity to speak there today. The state's governor has been uh, fairly frank in saying when this happens, uh, it will be uh, uh, something she would sign into law immediately. Interesting there. I don't know if you caught there in the picture that we saw just a moment ago, somebody flying the American flag upside down. So make no mistake, this is still a very polarizing issue just because state lawmakers there voted not in unison, but certainly in a strong majority to remove it. That does not mean that there are not many people who feel very differently than, in fact, in fact it should still fly. Context of this also important to remember. This comes after the church massacre in uh, Charleston not long ago, where uh, so many people died at a predominantly black church. A uh, victim of a gunman uh, who authorities say uh, was a man who also displayed a Confederate flag in pictures uh, taken just before the massacre. So the crowd gathered there right now. Again, this is uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, capital of that state, uh, just outside the state house where a Confederate flag has flown for the better part of 50 years now and is after this morning, presumably no longer ever going to fly there again. If you are just joining us, we will get you back to regular programming when the ceremony um, has wrapped up. Uh, but uh, where we are right now, again, uh, covering uh, live the, the change in the protocol at uh, Columbia, South Carolina for the uh, Confederate flag. American flag will still fly, state flag will fly as well, but no longer what's known as the rebel flag, uh, the war flag, battle club flag for the, uh, the Confederacy. We're told that the South Carolina Highway Patrol has arrived on the ground. I don't know if that's for a, a ceremonial 
uh, purpose or if that is uh, for security, maybe a little bit of both. There is the governor arriving to uh, handshakes uh, from those assembled, and you heard some cheers in the crowd as well, made the decision to sign the bill into law immediately so that this could happen uh, here on, uh, on Friday. And again, it became a matter of some urgency uh, by those who wanted this change made. They did not want it delayed. They did not want it to linger or last long through the month of July. They wanted it done before the end of this week. And uh, with her signature, that was made possible. So that, again, the governor of South Carolina, who made the decision, unpopular in some quarters, to sign this quickly and, uh, and get this change done. Again, the, the ceremony may be 10, 15 minutes in length if we're, if we're, if you will, reading the tea leaves correctly from the reports down there. Uh, they don't expect long speeches from many people, uh, though they haven't yet released a full accounting of uh, who will speak there today. In fact, some of those uh, decisions may still be right up to the very last minute uh, ones. As, uh, as we learn more about each of the individual speakers, we'll let you know what we do know, and uh, you'll hear from them some of the things that they wanted to say about this change. Of course, it won't, again, change what flies in terms of the American flag or the, the state flag uh, out there, but the, the rebel flag, the, the battle flag for the U.S. Confeder or the, uh, the Confederacy, I should say, uh, will no longer be part of the, uh, the official display outside the state capitol in South Carolina. Maybe worth mentioning that the NCAA did actually come forward to confirm yesterday what we just reported a couple of minutes ago that uh, once this change happens, uh, commerce will free up there in uh, South Carolina. Uh, for years, they have lost out on any opportunity to make much money, if you will, and greet many visitors from uh, out of state because of the many tournaments that the NCAA holds. It has not allowed South Carolina to uh, bid on those games, host those games, and reap the rewards of it. There you see some of the, uh, the pictures and signs that people have brought victory. It is coming down. Uh, that's one that we can read there about the... Uh, about the Confederate flag. Again, we've seen other pictures showing people flying American flags upside down, which would appear to be a protest of the decision. Uh, there you see some of the dignitaries who have, uh, have come. And there you see a little closer look at that sign I mentioned uh, just a moment ago. Um, politicians uh, were not uh, divided by the aisle in this case. Uh, both the Senate and the House uh, came up with majorities, and the majority of both parties uh, both voted for it. There you see the hashtag, take down the flag. Social media played a very big role in where we've gotten to at this point. Uh, as the debate played out over Twitter and played out over Facebook and all the other forms of social media. Uh, there you see, uh, again, part of the ceremony set to start. We'll listen in here for a second. Don't know if the speeches will start immediately. I'll jump back in to give a little more context uh, if and when that becomes appropriate. But let's go ahead and listen uh, to the reaction to this as the ceremony starts in Columbia, South Carolina.
They had promised a brief ceremony, and brief it was, the respectful removal of the Confederate flag from the uh, state capitol uh, outside uh, Columbia, South Carolina's uh, state house. And very interesting to watch. That was the honor guard of the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Worth noting, it was, to, it was a, a regiment of uh, a mixed race. Uh, marched in, uh, removed uh, the flag, brought it down on the flagpole, rolled it up, and zip tied it closed to the uh, cheers of USA, USA at one point, and then a rather uh, a giddy and, and somewhat spontaneous na na na, hey hey goodbye. Remember the old steam song that's turned into a, a sporting venue favorite when the uh, the game is no longer in doubt and the home team chants the. Uh, the uh, vanquished away. That was the chant that you heard uh, from the crowd there. Uh, lots of cheers. There may well have been uh, echoes of other opinions that we did not hear, uh, but it seemed that those cheers certainly overwhelmed any uh, protest uh, chants that we heard. So the flag is down. The Confederate flag that flew outside the South Carolina State House uh, no longer flies there, and at least uh, from the decision of lawmakers and the governor there right now, it will never fly there again. Goes to a relic room now. We have more perspective on this story coming up today on 24 Hour News 8 at noon. Also continuing coverage on wishtv.com. And you can see some of it as well on the app that you can find for your smartphone. So we invite you to, to uh, watch and uh, look through all of that. Join the conversation that we have going on Facebook as well uh, and through Twitter too. Uh, we do want to send you back to regular programming, but you can expect more from us on the decision and its effects here in Indiana throughout the day on 24 Hour News 8.